Uh, hi everyone. So welcome to uh, this in the episode of Identity 15 powered by WSO2. So today's topic is how to secure your application with proof key for code exchange. So we can pronounce it as Pixie. So in this following episode, we will see how we can integrate the authorization code with the Pixie flow in order to secure your application from the authorization uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, so uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Gayatri Magindra Kumaran, working as a software engineer at WSO2 from the identity and access management team. So before jumping into the topic, let's see the agenda for today. So we will see a what, why, and how. So here, first let's see what is the Pixie and what is the requirement to use the Pixie flow in our authorization flow. Then we can see how the Pixie flow works with the authorization code grant. And finally, let's have a demonstration on how the Pixie works with the identity server. So let's see uh, what is Pixie first. So it stands for proof key for code exchange. So we can pron pronounce it as Pixie. So it is a simple extension for the authorization grant in order to protect the application from authorization vulnerabilities. So it can be the authorization, uh, authorization code misuse or it can be stolen from some malicious applications. So mainly the Pixie was developed for the public clients. So we all know the public clients, like it can be a mobile application, single page application or native applications. So for the single page applications, the whole source code will be available in the browser. So those single page applications cannot store the client secret. So even though it's same for the native applications, like if we decompile them, the secret will be revealed. So these are public clients uh, do not have a real means of authenticating themselves. So let's elaborately see what is the issue with this authorization code. So in order to uh, understand that before, we need to know the basic authorization code grant flow. So here, when an application initializes an authorization request, it will send to the authorization server and it will respond to the authorization code to the redirect URI. Then the application can exchange it, uh, that code for an access token via the token endpoint. But consider here, in the same device that you have registered your client application, someone can register a malicious application with the same uh, custom redirect URI. So because the browsers, they cannot, they have a problem that uh, both of the applications can register under the same custom URI. So in this scenario, when your client application initializes the authorization request, it will send to the authorization server. So once it uh, responds the authorization code, so it will be re, uh, sent with, to the redirection URI. So here, both of these applications are registered under the same redirect URI. So there is a chance that this malicious app gets to know about the authorization code. So in that case, this malicious application can exchange the code for a token via the token endpoint. So now the these malicious applications get the access token. Now it can access the protected resources. It may be some private documents or images. So in order to fix this issue, we can use the Pixie flow. So before understanding the uh, flow, how the Pixie works, we need to know about some additional query parameters. So one of them is code verifier. So uh, if uh, in your client application, the applications need to generate a code verifier. It is a cryptographic random string. So it should be at least of uh, length 43 characters and it can go up to 128 characters. Then the application needs to generate the code challenge from the code verifier. So it can use the hashing mechanism and then it will encode the uh, hashed value with uh, this base64 URL encoding. So here, if it uses this SHA-256 for the hashing mechanism, then it should be sent as the code challenge method to the authorization code. Since it is an, uh, it is an optional parameter, so we, if you are not sending this uh, query param, it will be set to the plane. So in that case, it is expect that the code verifier and the code challenge values to be the same. So now we have an understanding about these uh, additional query params. 
So now uh, we can see how to integrate this Pixie with the authorization God grant. So uh, with this diagram, let's try to understand the flow. So when the user comes to the client application, it will um, initialize an authorization call to the identity provider. So as we all know, in the authorization call, we may have the redirect URI, client ID, scope, and state. In addition to that, in the Pixie flow, the client application needs to send the code challenge and the code challenge method. So in order to generate these things, the application will create the code verifier as per the specs, and it will do the hashing and other encoding mechanisms and will generate the code challenge. So if it uses uh, the SHA-256 for the hashing mechanism, then it will be sent as the code challenge method. So once the identity provider receives the authorization call, it will authenticate the user and send back the authorization code to the client application. So now the client application can exchange the code for the token. So when it's sending the uh, request to the token endpoint, normally it will include the client ID, code, redirect URI, and grant type. So that we don't need to include the uh, client secret as it's a public client. Then the code, it will be the authorization code that it receives from the identity provider. So in addition to this, it will send the code verifier. So when it, the request comes to the identity provider, it will try to uh, validate the authorization code and additionally, it will validate the code verifier. So the identity provider will try to regenerate the code challenge based on the, the uh, code challenge method that it sent and the code verifier it has. So once the uh, generated code challenge and the already sent code challenge values are similar, then it will send the access token back to the application. So now the application successfully uh, gets authenticated. But in case, as previously, if there is any malicious application was registered under the same redirect URI, then it will uh, it has a chance to get the authorization code. But if it tries to get the token, uh, via the token endpoint, it needs to add the code verifier in the request. So the malicious application doesn't have the code verifier. So it, if it uh, tries to generate some random values and send to the identity provider, obviously the verification will fail and the malicious application will not get the access token. So with the help of the Pixie, we could able to protect this issue, protect the application. So I hope you have an overall idea on how the Pixie flow works. So let's have a demonstration on how the uh, flow works. So here we have a sample uh, article in order to try out the flow. So I will try out the flow with the identity server and use a playground sample application to show the demo. So in order to download the identity server, you can go to the WSO2 official website and in the products, you can select the identity server and you can download the pack. So I have already downloaded the latest pack and the pack is already up and running in my machine. And uh, we need to download the sample application. So we can download the application from here. So we can download the playground to war file. So I have already downloaded both of these applications and I have deployed the sample application in my Tomcat server. So once you have completed this, you could able to access the application via this URL. So now we have successfully deployed the application. So now uh, let's do the configurations in the identity provider, identity server. So we need to do the, uh, we need to create a service provider. So you can access the management console from this URL. So uh, I will authenticate the user with the admin credentials. So once we log into the management console, we need to create a service provider. Uh, so once we create the service provider, we need to do the configurations. So in the inbound authentication configuration, we need to provide the callback URL of the application. So this is the callback URL for the application. So in the inbound authentication configurations, uh, we can do the configurations here. So 
So for the callback URL, I will give the callback URL that copied from the sample applications. So since we are trying the Pixie flow, we need to tick this Pixie mandatory. And so since we are using the public client, so we do, do not need the client secrets. So we need to enable this as well. So these are the configurations that we need to do in the service provider. So once I have did the configuration, I can update the service provider. So then we need to make a copy of this uh, client key that will be used in the following flows. So now we have completed up to this point in the identity provider. So now uh, we can try out the Pixie flow. So for that, we need to navigate to the application. So I will try it in the private window. So once we are uh, once we are go to the applications, we need to provide the following details. Uh, so the authorization grant we need to give it as authorization code and client ID we have already generated from the identity server. Then the callback URL for the author and the scope uh, we can provide the scope based on our requirement. And basically, we need to enable this pixel. So here uh, we have two options for the code challenge method. One is S256, other one is the plane. So when we select the plane, we can see that the both code challenge and the code verifier will have the same value. So in this flow, I will use with the S256 hashing mechanism. So once we have given the details, we can send the authorization code. So once we send the authorization code, we will redirect to this page. Here we can give the credentials and do the authentication. So once the authorization completes, we will be uh, we now we get the authorization code. You can verify that in the URL as well. So here we don't need to provide the client secret. When we uh, try to get the token, so now we have successfully get the access token. So we can try out the flow once again by providing a low uh, ROM code verifier. So here, if uh, some other malicious applications get the authorization code, then it uh, it should need the so this uh, application should need the co uh, code verifier. So if it gives some other wrong random strings, then try to get the access token. Obviously, the token call will fail. So we have now we have tried the flow with the applications. So in order to get a more understanding, we can try out with the API calls and the curl commands. So this is the sample authorization call that we are sending. So here we need to give the client key and the callback URL. So here mainly we need to give the code challenge that we have generated and the code challenge method that we have used. So this is the sample uh, authorization call that I'm going to use. So I have registered a sample application, a service provider and given some uh, random callback URL. Actually, there's no uh, real application running this URL. So I will provide this URL. So once I send the authorization code, I need to authenticate as a user. So once the author authentication completes, uh, we will get an authorization code uh, to this particular uh, redirect URL. So once we uh, get the authorization code, we can invoke the token API, token command. Uh, so here I have a sample token curl command. So here we need to provide the authorization code. And, and also we need to pass the code verifier that we have already generated. So if we are trying with the curl command, so uh, uh, we can use this link. So we can give the code verifier and try to generate the code challenge. So you can use this in order to generate your own code challenge. Mm -hmm. So here I have a sample uh, token curl command. So I will give the authorization code. If I give the curl command, so successfully I have got the access token. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much from the hands-on session. Uh, 
so I hope you have got an idea how the Pixie Flow works uh, with the authorization code and uh, protect the uh, public clients. So uh, now, uh, if you have any questions, you can raise them in the uh, live chat. So let me check if there are any questions. Uh, seems there are no more questions. Also, if you have any questions or any issues with the configurations, you can raise them in the Slack channel. Uh, all the links are given in the description. And make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel in order to get notified for the future videos. And make sure to follow us on Twitter in order to get the other updates. Uh, so let's wait for a few minutes uh, if you are getting any questions. Uh, seems we are not getting any questions, so uh, we can conclude the session. Uh, thank you all for joining and stay safe. Uh, bye.